Have you been scrolling through many, many, many film podcasts thinking there's far too many of these? Or have you been thinking there's something missing? There's something we're not quite getting. A waffler from Northern England reviewing films, for example. Welcome to oh, Review It Yourself. No politics, no pandering, no point. So this film is one of those films that, you know, you've been meaning to watch for ages. It comes out and you think, oh, I'll watch it at some point. And then like three or four years go past and you think, yeah, I really should give that film a watch. Well, Saturday morning, I had a few too many orange juices the night before and I thought, oh, I'm not feeling too good. And I thought, what can I watch? And I thought, oh, I'll watch that A Quiet Place. I thought, I've got it taped from God knows how long ago. I thought, I'll stick that on. Really enjoyed it. Really, really impressed with it. Really happy to see there's a sequel. So there is a bonus to putting things off for a while. You know, there's a there's a sequel by the time you come to it. Or like in the, you know, like in Game of Thrones, by the time you discover it, it's like six series in and you don't have to wait ages. Or 24. I discovered that when that was pretty much finished before it came back, you know, for living of the day. And then... 24 Legacy, which I really liked, to be fair. I liked, um, is it Corey Hawkins? I think that was his name. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Anyway, we're not here to talk about 24. We're here to talk about A Quiet Place. So, 2018 film. Starts off post-apocalyptic. I think it's set in, like, 2021. And you see this family in, like, a supermarket. And they're doing sign language to, to each other. Um, American... Uh, sign language and you figure out that the daughter's got hearing loss she's got a cochlear implants that don't seem to be working the there's a family there's the mom dad there's the she teenage daughter who's got the hearing loss you've got um an, i don't know like a four-year-old boy and i think i'm a six seven-year-old boy and the littlest boy um He's got this, he's fascinated with rockets and he's drawing one with crayon on the floor of this kind of supermarket and he finds a rocket and he wants to keep it and the dad takes it off him and says, in sign language, no, it's too loud. He puts it down and says, you know, we can't, we can't take it, I'm sorry. And this is all signed as well. There's, there's no speech in this until about 38 minutes. The the daughter, she gives the little boy, because that, that's another thing, you don't learn the names either. Uh, you don't know them till the credits, and he, she takes this little rocket and gives gives it to the kid, uh, but takes out the batteries, as if to say, yeah, you can have it. You know, you need a little bit of happiness, a little bit of joy in this very quiet, depressing, desolate world. There's there's nobody around, but unbeknownst to her, he takes the batteries before this. So they're all setting off. The little boys at the back. She that has probably has all the supplies in. So there's nobody with the little, there's the daughter and then there's the little boy. He puts the batteries back in the toy uh, just as they get to this bridge and they hear these noises going off and it's really shocking because the film's so quiet that, I mean, there's not even any bird song or anything like that. I mean, I don't know whether they explain that maybe these creatures killed the birds. I don't know. But it's so quiet. Like, the only noise you get in the film is, like, water, like rivers and waterfalls and like when a pipes burst with water uh, there's not a lot of ambient noise at all and it's really shocking and obviously the daughter can't hear can't hear what's happening and you get this great scene where sh- she sees everybody else's reactions shot and the dad drops the little boy at the middle of uh, the older boy and runs towards his son and he sees something like galloping uh, thundering out of the forest and before he can get to the little boy the little boy is just whipped off uh, up off screen and you gather that he's been killed and then that's like day 84 or something like that of presumably this what you find out well you don't find out there's little snippets of newspapers and this that and the other you gather it's some kind of alien invasion the little boy the youngest of them now he's traumatised you would be being brought up in a world like this you can't make a sound. 
um, for fear of, of being killed. There are other survivors out there. The dad lights a fire on top of one of those. Is it like a grain silo that you get on farms? And the others light fires to show that they're there. You know, you see two distinct fires in the in the distance. But you gather that humans, the, the few that are left, stay away from each other. And that's another very unique thing about this film that a lot of other post-apocalyptic films, you get a lot of conflict between, you know, human survivors, even though they're trying to survive something. So you, War of the Worlds, you have, um, what's the other one? Uh, Book of Eli, films like that. Uh, Mad Max, which I haven't seen. I was just trying to think post-apocalyptic. Ignore that one. Um, there's a lot of conflict between the humans, but in this film, in this scenario, because any conflict between humans would invariably cause noise that would then mean, mean they all get killed. There's no kind of attacks. They don't attack each other or anything like that. It really does follow just, just this family. I think there's only six characters in the whole film. There's the five members of the family and an old man. That's it. The whole film. Ambient noises are, are amplified so the, the daughter and the son are playing I think Monop uh, Monopoly. Yeah, Monopoly, and the, you hear the dice roll, and uh, they knock over one of those lamp lanterns, and it bursts into flames, and the dad manages to stop it. Um, you think a creature's on top of the roof, but it turns out to be raccoons, and as the raccoons kind of walk away outside, one gets splattered by this creature's foot or hand because it's making too much noise. The family walk around barefoot. The dad puts ash along the main path routes to muffle the noise of them walking. Because you, you gather these creatures are blind. You don't see them an awful lot, which I think is good. But you gather they're blind and they go purely off, off hearing. You know, echolocation type thing. And so they can walk about. They don't have to hide. They can walk about. It's, it's more about noise. And there's, like I said, there's not a lot of interaction uh, in the film in terms of verbal interaction. In fact, there's barely any. I think there's like, I'd be surprised if there's more than 10 lines in this film. I, I really would. There's barely any talking in it at all. And I, I actually was thinking and I wrote it down that you could watch this film with the sound off and it would make no difference whatsoever. And actually I found out that the the actor who plays the dad, who directs the film as well, he actually edited it without the sound and came out afterwards and said, "Yeah, you could, you could watch this without the sound, and you could." The 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 times where they talk, <laughs> it wouldn't affect it at all. Really, that there's that little talking in it. You know, it was a really interesting film to watch. So the dad's does. Maintenance on his hear on his daughter's hearing aids. Well, uh, they're not hearing aids; they're like cochlear implants. And the wife comes up and hugs him, and um, she puts some earphones in his ears. And it's this beautiful. It's the first time you hear music, and it's it's like a revelation. It's just so beautiful and so loud, and I mean, but it's in these noise cancelling earphones, so that it wouldn't be heard. The wife's pretty pregnant at this point seven or eight months six or seven months easy and the they slow dance and the, the music's just beautiful in this quiet quiet world and i wasn't sure at this point whether the ash was to keep these creatures away but you figure out later it's just to muffle the footsteps you see the son and daughter and i couldn't figure this out till the end i thought they were decorating the the farmhouse but they're actually soundproofing the basement with like newspapers on the walls and uh, lacquering it up so the dad says to the daughter, no, don't go in the basement. And the daughter and the dad have an argument about, because he's trying to give her this uh, implant he's been working on, and he says, look up, you know, try this in your ears. It's a different, uh, you know, on your head, connected to your ear. It's a, it's a different frequency. It should work. And she argues with him and says it never works. And there's this anger, but like the relationship's broken down. You can tell she thinks that he blames her. She blames herself. And a lot goes unsaid. Of course, she's got frustrations. And she's frustrated as, on top of, of the frustrations of the life and having to be so quiet and losing the brother and the guilt. There's also the fact that she's cut off from the others. And yes, she can sign and she can talk. She can talk to them. 
and communicate with them, should I say. But she can't. You gather before this, before everything happened, and she wasn't able, you know, when she had maintenance on this cochlear implant, she would have been able to hear. Um, from the from my limited understanding of cochlear implants, so she's more isolated than she ever has been before. So not only is she, you know, she's had to in in a year and a bit had to adjust to this vastly changed world. She's also even more cut off from her family than ever before. And then her brother's death on top of that just compounds everything for her. And you see the the mum, she's homeschooling the, the boy, teaching him maths, English. And you did never say what their roles were. I mean, I thought maybe the mum was a teacher. The dad was maybe a scientist or an engineer. Because you see, he's got like chalkboards um, in the basement. He's trying to figure out what these animals, what these creatures are, what they want, what their weaknesses are. The dad takes the son on an expedition to learn how to survive, and the kid's terrified, doesn't want to go. It's 38 minutes in before anyone talks, and the dad teaches the son about noises and actually verbally says to him, look, we're near a, we're near a waterfall. We can talk as long as our small noise isn't bigger than the big noise. We can't be heard. And he takes the son to like a little crevice near a waterfall, and the dad like shouts out into you know into the wild and the son's terrified because ordinarily that would mean death and you can see him understanding and the son the son shouts as well and it's this film does a lot without saying a lot and i don't mean literally saying you know not i don't mean speech i mean it conveys a lot of emotions and a lot of how the characters are feeling purely by how they act and the actors and actresses do a fantastic job. And just that frustration of, of the, the world that they're in. And we're not meant to be quiet. We're not meant... We, if, if there's something that the last couple of years have taught us as well, is that we're not meant to be isolated from each other. We're social animals, beings, whatever you want to call us. We need other people. We need to talk to other people. We need to connect with other people. This is a family that, that are surviving, yes. But they are just... I mean, they are just surviving. We, we've got a lot of frustrations and there's a lot goes unsaid. And the mum and dad are trying to teach them about... Survive, the younger kids about survival. Because it's survival ab above all else. And it's more about... That's what the first scene's about with the little boy um, with the whole space, uh, the space shuttle. The dad says, no, we can't have it. I'm sorry. It's too dangerous. Very pragmatic, cold, unemotionless, but comes from a place of love. No, I don't want you to die. And the daughter is more naive in her thinking. She's like, no, you can have this. And thinks she's protecting him, takes the batteries out, but that sets in motion a chain of events that means the, the kid gets killed because she's trying to still give him a little bit more of a childhood, if you will. She's trying to, you know, give him this rocket ship that he will, he'll enjoy and he can, you know, he can play with and fly around with and, you know, draw and things like that. But there's no place for that in this world anymore. So, I mean, <laughs> I do, you know, I do think this is a great film that you could easily, easily sit and really have a good chat with somebody who liked films and say, look, what did you think of this bit? What did you think that bit meant? I love films like this because this film, really, when you look at the genre, the, the, the genre it's in, in terms of, you know, aliens invade, and you think, oh, I know what this is going to be. I know what this is going to be like. And this film just subverts a lot of that and i do think the word subverts gets overused but this this film really does in my in my opinion and it gives you so much to talk about in fact um josh from talking smack podcast that's superheroes movies animation and comics is going to be joining me might not be for a few months but he's going to join me to review a quiet place 2 which i can't wait for i really can't because it's exactly what i was talking about that this is one of those films where you could sit 
And, you know, I've no doubt there's people who watched it and kind of went, oh, well, not much happened. It wasn't great, really. You know, now there's something in out. Now, it's fair enough, but there's other people like myself who go, no, actually, I really enjoyed that. And you see all these different elements and ideas and and it comes across really well. Never comes across as, like, pretentious or, you know, they're trying to make this big statement. There's no politics and it. it's nothing like that. You know, I really, I really enjoyed it. So anyway, where were we up to? We were up to, yeah, okay. So 38 minutes in, someone talks. that The dad and the kid are at the waterfall. The daughter wanted to go with them, but the dad was like, no, stay here. Look after your mum. Uh, help her out. And the daughter, you can see the daughter thinks he, he doesn't love me. In fact, she says that. She, she signs with her, the, the, the brother and says, you know, something on lines of it. He doesn't love me anymore and he blames me. And the son says to the dad on the walk on this expedition, they go on to, it teaches him how to fish and, you know, with a net and salmon and all that kind of thing. And he says to him, Do you blame, do you know, do you blame for what happened? And the dad's like, No, of course. And he's like, Do you love her? And the dad's like, Yes. And he's like, The son says, You should tell her. I was thinking, Why didn't he, he let her come? And the son, I like this deal. The son doesn't talk very well. He 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 talks very softly, and that makes an awful lot of sense because he wouldn't. He he's probably barely talked in his life. But that used to being silent. The daughter blames herself, and you think she leaves. She packs a bag. Her mum's washing up, um, and she just goes. And I was thinking, oh, she's gonna go after them and get killed. But no, she, she actually goes back to the spot where her little brother died on the bridge. And she takes the rocket. And she's... I, I don't know whether the dad's done it or whether she's done it. Fixed it so that the rocket flashes but doesn't make a noise anymore. You see the mum, she's sat crying in, in her little son's room. And she's looking at pictures of her, the little boy they lost. The dad and the son stumble across the this body that of this old lady who's just in pieces and there's an old man there and you gather that it's it's his wife and he he looks just grief stricken and the dad looks at him and he's like shaking his head and he puts his fingers to his lips like no please don't do it please don't do it and this man just screams he doesn't want to live anymore he screams with the pain he's lost his wife he's he, he's not bothered anymore uh, we don't know what happened to the wife. She's just, she's dead. You know, she's been killed by one of these creatures. The, this creature appears and just takes the man out while the son and the dad hide. The man's waters break and there's a nail on the stairs that she steps on and she drops a photo frame which smashes. A creature ends up in the house and she flips a switch to say that, um, that turns all these lights they've got round the farm red which is for danger which is a visual aid for not just the rest of the family but for the daughter as well and the son and dad get home and see the lights the man manages to use an egg timer and this and get away because the it's creature kind of stalks around the house the dad says to the son you've got to go set the rockets off we need a distraction your mum's in trouble the mum ends up in the bathtub then the tension's outstanding. I mean, this is the scene that people will say, oh, is that one where she gives birth in the bath? And it's like, yeah, pretty much. And she can't hold, you know, she's going through labour throughout this as well, but trying to be silent. If she makes a noise, she'll get killed. And the fireworks, she screams just as the fireworks go off. The dad gets into the house with a shotgun. The daughter on the bridge sees the fireworks and rushes back. The dad gets upstairs, sees blood in the bathtub, and he thinks she's dead. But she's in the shower with the baby. And then I, I was just thinking, how, oh, my God, how would you keep a baby quiet? And the creature chases the boy. And he runs into a tractor and gets knocked out. in like Because he's running through, like, a, a like a cornfield. A bit like in Field of Dreams. And he, he runs straight into this big tractor wheel and knocks himself out. And the baby's too loud. They hide underground and the creature's right near them. And they put this baby in like a little box um, and give it, I mean, I don't know what it is, oxygen or a sedative, something. 
um, just to like to settle the baby down, which is also why I was thinking, I don't know if the dad's a scientist or a medic or something. And the creature ends up right near the girl and she turns up a cochlear implant and this frequency causes the, the creature to run away. And the mum uh, uh, wakes up and she's had a nightmare of the little boy. The dad's gone out to find the boy and uh, to find his son and daughter. And it's the first time I've, you hear the mum speak. And she's talking to the dad and she says, you know, I, I could have carried him. He was so heavy. He was so little. Bay was really heavy. I can still feel the weight in my arms. And it's a really emotional, brilliant scene by Emily Blunt. And she says, I was carrying the bag, but my hands were free. And she, she's grief stricken. And she blames herself as well. And the dad is like, no, it's not, you know, it's not your fault. And it's, it's just a great scene. Um, the mom ends up going to sleep because she's exhausted. The dad goes out to find the kids, finds them both okay. Well, the kids light a fire on top of the silo to try and signal others, but no one else is lighting fires. One of them obviously was the old man and his wife. And then, so it shows that little, you know, bit by bit, the small humans, that the small population of humans that are left are slowly being taken out as well. And then we find out there's a creature still there the man wakes up and the the creature that came in earlier damaged some pipes and the basement's flooded. The baby's floating in a box and she stands face to face with this creature and you can see she's not going to give up another kid. She, um, But there's water running and it causes a lot of noise and she and the daughter on top of the silo is like, I want to leave. Um, they're not coming for us. They've gone. And the, the son's like, no, I want to stay. We'll wait. Dad will come for us. So it shows that how disconnected she is from dad. She doesn't believe he'll come for her. Or is it just because she's older and more jaded and understands the world more and realises the chances of him being alive uh, are, are quite, uh, quite, you know, quite low. And so the creature heads for the silo. Uh, the, the sun, sorry, falls through, as he's arguing with it, falls through a hatch, um, causes noise and falls into the silo, uh, into the grain. It starts to almost drown or suffocate in the grain. The daughter jumps in to save him. And they manage to get on uh, this like hatch, big hatch cover that stops them sinking. And I was thinking, oh, like, <laughs> don't have them all die at this point. Uh, the kids hide. Um, the dad grabs an axe. Oh, no, sorry, the dad finds them. No, I tell a lie. Sorry, no. So the creature comes, drops down, ends up on the other side of this hatch with the kids beneath it starts attacking it. The daughter does the thing with a, a, rim, a cochlear implant again and it, it, it jumps out of the side and runs away. The dad finds the kids, reunites with them and then a creature appears. The dad grabs an axe but he gets whacked and smashed out the way and the son screams for his dad and this creature attacks them in the car. And the dad's alive. He's hurt, but he's alive. And he stands and he realises he's got the, his kids are going to die and he has to save them. So he signs to his daughter and his son, I love you. And then he signs to his daughter, I have always loved you. And he screams and the creature attacks him and, the, and kills him. And the daughter and the son manages to get away. There's a standoff in the basement with the daughter and the son and the man with the baby. And the daughter does the feedback thing with a with a cochlear implant and puts it on like a radio mic. And the the creature's gonna go for her son and she shoots it in the head, the man, which causes all this noise. And two more creatures head towards the farm. You can see it on the CCTV. The daughter sees finally in the basement that the dad's been working on. He's been researching cochlear implants and trying to figure out how to fix it for her. And they see them come, the daughter, the mum has the shotgun, the little, the the boy has the, the baby, the baby boy, and the daughter's there. And the daughter picks up the radio mic 
with uh, ready for these other two creatures and the uh, the mamcocks the shotgun and i just thought and there is there is time at the end in that final few scenes where the daughter and cries because she sees how much her dad did love her and he was trying to fix this you know even though it wasn't his speciality he was trying to fix you know implant uh this cochlear implant to to give her sound and help her reconnect and you know, with the with the world and and I just thought, and then the 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 film ending with the you know the mamcock and the shotgun, I thought was thought was great, great ending. And I just thought, what a great film! It was snappy, intelligent, tense. You know, there was only six people in the film, and then just how clever it was. Like it really been thought about. So you saw, um, not that I want answers all the time. You usually don't. I mean, sometimes it's the explanation is never as good as you want. So. We see a meteor might have hit Mexico, uh, multiple landing sites. We see like clippings of newspapers throughout, um, and it was Simmons, the the actress who uh, who who actually does have a hearing impairment herself, who plays the daughter. She actually said to and I can't remember his name. She said to the actor uh, who directed it and who started the dad. She said to him, "Ad, Ad, I have always loved you." And that made it because it links back into the whole thing of the film between the daughter and the dad about she doesn't think uh, he loves her anymore because she caused the, the son to die and, and he's just overwhelmed with guilt that he should have protected them all. And it's yeah, it was it was brilliant. Uh, the characters aren't named, which I didn't have a problem with, and it it does leave the you know the door open for a sequel. And, you know, speaking of leaving doors open, none of the doors are up. Uh, you never see a door get closed in the film. Because why would you? Because it caused noise. The way the characters do things throughout the film, it's all very measured. They don't do anything rushed. They don't grab anything. It's all very controlled to minimise the amount of noise. In the supermarket at the beginning, most of the shelves have been, you know, pretty much picked clean, except the crisps. There's mounds of crisps on the shelves because nobody wanted to pick up a food that would be, would be potentially very noisy to eat. You know, it's things like that, that, those little details that admittedly I only, you know, I read that last one with trivia, but these are things that when I rewatch it, the film, I would love to kind of look into it a bit more because when you first watch it, you're trying to figure out what's going on because I didn't know an awful lot about the film. I knew, I knew it was about creatures that, and you had to keep quiet to survive, but that's literally it. I didn't really know what I was going into. So yeah, if you haven't seen a quiet place, if you're one of those strange people like me who who hasn't seen it, um, who's maybe put it off or thought, oh no, it's I heard about it. It's probably all hyped. Well, for once, the hype, the hype's worth it. If you can find this, well, you will be able to find it. It's quite a popular film, but you know, a quiet place. Search it out, find it. I'll be back in a few months to review it with Josh. Uh, a Quiet Place 2, which I'm looking forward to. There's a podcast episode coming out on Saturday, which is a review of Die Hard 2, which I've done with Ryan Walker from the Walk the Line podcast. Uh, please go give him, a, give him a follow. And I'll be back. Well, I'll be back on Saturday. And yeah, as ever, guys, if you'd like me to review anything in particular, Please just, you can find us on Instagram. Uh, it's at yourself review. You can also find us on Podchaser at Good Pods. We're also on Spotify, Google Pods. Um, we're on Twitter as well. So, yeah, just, yeah, thanks for listening. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>